This is Ladybug Dog Packing Summer. Yeah, so my cameraman saw the video from Sunol Regional Wilderness, and he said, you know what, your narration was kind of redundant. You kind of repeated yourself. So Ladybug made friends with these people. So she ran into some people, had some dogs, and then those people got ahead of us on the trail. Those people got ahead of us on the trail. Well, you know what, I'm 52. Get used to it. And I am Clifton Gordon True. I also noticed when I watched the video that I said that Ladybug's behavior was not that great and I didn't explain what the problem was. The problem was her recall was not very good when we were at Sunol. And now I look back, I think that the problem was probably because it was so windy and the wind flips her ears up and then uh, she can't hear. So I think the problem was mostly that she couldn't hear me and that I was not making any kind of movement to to recall her. I was just using my voice. With just about every command with Ladybug I try to use a visual signal as well as my voice. And so to call her back I go like this. Come back, come back, come back. Or sit, just like this. And stop is that. And stay is that. Make sure to go play. Vision. Go play. When I was first taking Ladybug out hiking, a wise old hiker told me the most important command you can teach your dog when you're out hiking is not come back or come here or whatever you call it. The most important command is stop. And that's for two reasons. Uh, for one thing, you might not always want your dog to come back. For instance, if there's a predator in the area, you don't want to call your dog back because once your dog starts running back to you, that's a signal to the predator to pursue pursue your dog. And when your dog weighs 42 pounds, your, your dog is going to look like prey to a mountain lion, for instance. The other reason that stop is such an important command is that it's a command that you don't ever want to have to repeat. For instance, if, you're, if your dog is running towards a rattlesnake, uh, you, want, you want to make sure the dog stops when you say stop. If you have to repeat stop, the dog is going to catch up to the rattlesnake before you have time to say stop a second time. Sometimes people say, oh, you take your dog out where there's rattlesnakes, aren't you afraid of rattlesnakes? No, I'm not afraid of rattlesnakes. I've lived around rattlesnakes my whole life. And in my experience, they're very timid creatures. And they will just scatter as soon as they sense you're in the area. They'll go take off and hide. And the few times I've actually seen a rattlesnake up close and in person, that rattlesnake has been trying to get away as fast as he can. That rattlesnake doesn't want anything to do with you or your dog or your kids or your horse or anything. That rattlesnake just wants to get out of your way. And if you talk to people who work in emergency rooms in rattlesnake country, they'll tell you that almost always a rattlesnake bite is on the hand or the wrist because the way people get bit is they'll reach some place where they can't see. They'll reach into a hole or a wood pile or a rock pile and that's when you get bit. Uh, you don't get bit because the rattlesnake comes chasing you and wants to jump on you, but that's not how it works. So yeah, I'm not afraid of rattlesnakes. You know what I'm afraid of? Paranoid dog owners. Man, I would go to Wildcat Canyon any day rather than a fenced dog park where you run into people. Most dog owners are great. 99 times out of, 999 times out of a thousand dog owners at dog parks are great. But you always run into that paranoid dog owner. Like there's the dog owner who thinks that every kind of vocalization is aggression. And you wouldn't know it from the videos, but Ladybug's actually a pretty vocal dog. You know, you rub her tummy and she goes, Yeah, and she barks and she play growls. So if she plays with other dogs, she, she'll start going, Which just means, hey, I'm having fun. I'm having a good time. But some paranoid dog owners don't always get that. And they think that she's, she's trying to start it fight with their dogs. But what really gets me is the dog owners who think that the dogs are going to form a dog pack. There is this persistent urban myth that I encounter in dog parks where people believe that 
you get to a certain number of dogs you get to a certain critical mass of dogs and they form a pack they're going to form a pack and then they're uncontrollable you know they'll i well i don't know what they do once they form a pack do they go hold up liquor stores or what nobody's ever explained that part to me but there's people who think that you get a certain number of dogs together and they're going to form this dog pack and they'll be completely out of your control and you'll see people counting they'll count the number of dogs playing in a group and they'll say oh, five dogs uh oh it's a dog pack now blows my mind so I think the way this urban myth about the dog pack got started is that people observed that their dogs uh, weren't paying attention to them. The bigger the group is that your dog is playing with, the harder it is to get your dog to pay attention to you. So you might think, oh, five dogs, that's the magic number. It's a dog pack now. My dog is out of control. Well, no, what's really going on is your dog is dealing with a really high level of distraction. And so the more distractions your dog has, the harder it's going to be for you to get your dog to pay attention to you. When your dog is just there in the house with no distractions, it's very easy to get your dog to obey commands. You take your dog out someplace where there's gophers and cows and things, it's going to be a little harder to get your dog to pay attention to you. And if you go to a dog park and there's lots of dogs to play with, well then that's a really high level of distraction. And you just need to work up to that. Any dog trainer will tell you that. You just need to work up to getting your dog to be able to pay attention to you when there's a lot of stuff going on. That's all there is to it. There's no such thing as a dog pack. Your Cocker Spaniel is not going to join a dog pack and go hold up liquor stores. That won't happen. Now, if you'd seen Ladybug yesterday in Wildcat, you would have thought she was the best behaved dog in the world. And that's partly because I remember to use my visual signals on her when I was giving her commands. And it's partly because I stuffed my pockets full of yams and chicken giblets. But you know, you do what works. Oh yeah, remember how I said always check your dog for ticks? completely forgot to check Ladybug for ticks. We got home. We got so excited because we found a cherry tree. Out in Wildcat Canyon there's a an old sanitarium. It's a place where there used to be a sanitarium. And so the sanitarium had fruit trees all over the place. There was a sanitarium way back a long time ago when you had to grow your own fruit. You can't just go to Costco and buy fruit. So there's fruit trees all over there and we found these Rainier cherries and they were really good so we got so excited me and the cameraman we were picking these cherries and this was a fruit tree by a creek so obviously the dog is going to pick up a tick or two and then I didn't think about ticks until we got home and I said oh I forgot to check her for ticks so I got all my tick equipment out of the dog pack and sure enough Ladybug had a tick on her underside by her leg, which is where the ticks like to hang out for some reason. So I used my tick puller and pulled it out, and I got that thing just in time. This is my tick puller. I, I pulled them out, and then I wouldn't recommend smushing ticks, because if they have disease and you smush them, you're just spreading that disease around. So I always put them in, well, rubbing alcohol, except I didn't have time to find the rubbing alcohol, so I just ran to the bar and a shot of vodka and I put the tick in. He died happy. Vodka continues on the path of Ladybug Super Dog. So Ladybug and I are going up to Sebastopol today to see my dad for Father's Day and we're gonna take her to Regal Ranch. That's the plan where they have a beautiful dog park. Strike in an instant in case my wrongdoer came, comes in sight. This is the saga of Ladybug. If you want to find dog parks in the Bay Area, if you're in the Bay Area, if you're coming to the Bay Area with your dog, I cannot recommend this book highly enough. This is The Dog Lover's Companion to the Bay Area by Maria Goodovich. And it's got all kinds of good stuff in here. I think just about every place you've seen me take Ladybug is, is in this book. Stop. This is not any laughing matter. <laughs> Do you understand? <laughs>
<laughs> do you understand, Ladybug? Of course you do. Ladybug knows everything. Go play.